Hey guys, what's up? JWisp here and welcome to episode 3 of the Minecraft 1.16 Survival Let's Play. I have a really eventful episode for you guys. We're going to do a lot of stuff. Like, I'm going to show you guys how to make a super easy and simple automatic cow farm. It's literally only a few blocks. Also, how to make a super easy villager breeder any size you want. And also, how to easily get the best villager. But even though we're doing all of that, I'm going to try to do it in as short amount of time as possible so I get the information to you guys quick. And it's not a super long episode. But before I get into that, I just want to say really quickly two things. One, seriously, as cheesy as it sounds, thank you so much for the support on the series so far. It's only episode 3 and people are already having an amazing reaction. So thank you so much for that. And also, I am going to start posting a lot different content on my second channel. A lot of it will be Minecraft, but I think I want to try messing around with some high pixel and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, check out my second channel. And also, check out all my social media links in the description for more updates. Alright, so to start off today, I'm going to show you guys how to make this super easy automatic cow farm. The way it works is it crams a bunch of cows into a one block space, and pretty much Minecraft says that there's a limit to how many cows can be in one spot. And once you get over, I believe, 24 or 25, it automatically starts killing adult cows, but when you breed the cows, the baby cows still survive. So it's a pretty simple farm. I'll show you guys how to make it. All you're going to need is a fence, so let's make one of those, a few blocks, and then you'll need a water source, a chest, and also a hopper. The hopper is probably the most expensive part, but I, I can probably make it. I forget actually how to do it. What is it? Oh, just like that? Okay. Pretty simple. <laughs> Nothing crazy. And then we have to get a chest. So let's just make our chest really fast. And then also let's make a few fences. It's a pretty cheap design, and it's definitely worth it if you, uh, if you still don't have an enchant table in your world. So I'm just doing this so I can get leather for that. I feel like getting sugarcane will be pretty easy, but uh, get, getting leather is always the hard part for me. So just go to a spot where you have a lot of cows nearby. Uh, I'm just going to do it here. Or this does work on servers, so if you have a, uh, you know, if you have like cow spawn eggs, that works good. But all you need to do is dig down two blocks and then dig down two more blocks. And then what we're going to do is place our chest. And then right behind the chest, place the hopper going into it. Now, what you're going to do is really quickly take whatever building block you're using and simply make some stairs out of it. This is just so we can place a block on top of the chest. Oh, we got to place it the other way. Um, God, I can't get it <laughs> so that we can still open the chest. Here, let's just place a block there and then... There we go. That works. <laughs> and then what you're going to do is all around, just start placing whatever block you have. And then right down in the middle here, we're going to place water. So let me grab some water really fast. And also, let's sleep so we can skip the night. Gosh, I placed one block and they all start leaving. But <laughs> after that, all you're going to need to do is place a water block right there. And you're pretty much done. What, what's going to happen next is you will have this little fence here so that it keeps all the cows trapped in place. <gasps> no! Your joke. Oh my god. <laughs> well, at least that didn't blow up any of my farm. Oh, it did blow up a little bit. Oh my gosh. I'm just. What is happening? This world, it, it's, it's so messed up now. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm trying to do an easy tutorial. Of course, the creeper has to ruin it. But anyways, this is a pretty simple design. You could probably build this just by looking at it. The only hard part now is you have to grab some wheat or your cow spawn eggs and try to lure the cows into this little one block hole. Now, since it's two blocks deep, uh, don't worry. They can't get out, but you just have to get them in there. So I'm going to spend a few minutes, try to at least get two cows in there so we can start breeding them. And I'll be right back. All right, so I got the cows in here. I also broke the fence and got the little dirt away. This is only temporary, so I know this farm doesn't look the best, so it's not going to be here too long. You could build a little thing around it if you want to look nicer, but this is pretty much the design. You just get the cows in here, and after that, you place fences. And the way it works is, like I said, there's a limit of only 24, 25 cows that can be in this one spot. So simply take your wheat, start breeding the cows. They will eventually make babies, and, oh, well, there's one already. Uh, once you get up, to about 24 or 25 that is the max number of cows you can have and if you breed any more cows what will happen is it'll automatically kill the adult cows but leave the baby cows alive so then just simply have access to your chest and when it kills the adult cows you'll get all the beef and leather and it'll drop right down into there so currently we don't have enough cows to really start doing that um, but once we get some more it'll start giving us tons of beef tons of leather and it'll definitely be a great farm Okay, so the next thing we're going to build is a villager breeder, and the reason I'm doing this is because we originally had a lot of villagers when we first came to this village, but 
now that time is sort of passed, um, the villager numbers are starting to go down because every time nighttime happens, we usually lose a villager or two. But what's great about villager breeders, at least the way I'm going to show you how to do them, is you can literally make it any size you want. You could make a little 5x5 five five cobblestone square, or you could do what I did on my survival uh, multiplayer let's play on Twitch, where I made it literally like 50x50 50 50 blocks, and I have like 50 villagers. It's crazy. You can do it any size you want, because there's only a few things you need. You need villagers, you need beds, and you need a farm. Now, you need a farm so that you can, you know, support your villagers. Your villagers need food, so you need to at least have a little farm. So I'll just grab some carrots here. I'll also grab some seeds. You can use whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. But besides that, the only thing you need is villagers and beds. Villagers will spawn as many villagers in a villager breeder as there are beds. So if the requirements are right for them to start breeding, if you have 12 beds, you can get 12 villagers. If you have 6 beds, you can get 6 villagers. If you have no beds, you'll have no villagers. So you need lots of beds. And then I'm also just going to grab some cobblestone to build a little enclosed area. I think I'm actually going to make it underground and I'll have a glass ceiling on top. So I think that's the way I'll do it. But let's just head over here and I'll show you guys how to get started with this. Okay, so I'm going to do my villager breeder right over here, right outside the village. One, because they're not the most attractive thing to look at, so I don't want to be right in the way of everything. Um, but two, you know, I, th I think I can, you know, it'll be easier. It'll be easier to get a villager to a point of low elevation to a point of high elevation. Because getting it to a low elevation is really easy using a boat. You can simply place a villager in a boat and then just ride the boat over to where you need to go. Um, villager breeders also work really well if you're already near a village. That way you can get composters easily for farming villagers. Uh, and you also have access to tons of beds already, so I'm probably going to take their beds. And you have easy access to villagers right next door. So I recommend building this near a village if you can. But if you're not near a village and you just have zombie villagers that you converted and you want to breed them, then that works alright as well. Alright, so I dug out a little pit for my villager breeder. Again, you can build this underground, above ground, doesn't matter. I just thought this was easier. Um, if you build it above ground, make sure you do make the walls pretty high so no mobs get in. And I was actually fortunate enough that literally when making this, I had two villagers just randomly fall, which is perfect. But I'll still show you guys methods of getting villagers in your villager breeder. And you have two main methods. Um, they're both pretty simple, but one works better. So the easiest method, the one that I think works best, is simply the boat method. All you need to do is just go up to a villager, place a boat, and the villager will most likely fall into the boat if I could actually place the boat correctly. And then what you can do is you can simply, see, bada bang, bada boom, go on the boat right in front of them, and then just take the boat to your villager breeder. Now this is rather slow, but I mean it works. And this is what I was saying earlier about how it's easier to take your villager to a place of lower elevation than high elevation. Because it's really hard to get your boat on a higher block, but it's easy for your boat to just fall. Now, if this method doesn't work for you, or you have to travel really long distances, then the other best method is really just either getting a villager egg if you're on a server, or if you are on survival, um, simply going to an abandoned mine shaft, or if you have a lot of iron, get tons of rails, and then with your rails, what you're going to do is build a rail system to your villager breeder and simply have your villagers be transported straight in here. Because similar to a boat, um, they can also take mine carts and simply get transported that way. It's pretty simple. But now that we have all of this, all of our villagers in here and our blank canvas for a villager breeder, there's two main parts we need to have. We need to have beds and we need to have a farm. So what I'm going to do is just start placing beds just like this. They can be right next to each other, it's okay. Just make sure every bed has one block access to it. So for example, if you start a second row of beds, don't start it just like this where the beds are right touching each other. Give them a block space so the villagers have access to all the beds. But anyways, these are all the beds I'm gonna use for now. I might gather a few more around the village. And then after this, the only other step you have to do is to make your farm. Alright, so to get started with the farm, it's pretty simple. All you really need is a hoe, a water, and some seeds. It doesn't matter what type of food you use, you can use wheat, carrots, potatoes, beets, really whatever floats your boat. And also, what's nice about this is the farm it doesn't have to be that big at all. It can be a really, really tiny farm, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make it maybe like a third of this, uh, no, much less than a third, probably a fourth or less. Um, the villagers really don't need a lot of food. Oh. 
okay. <laughs> the villagers really don't need a lot of food to be able to breed. They just need a little bit. Um, and especially if you have a farming villager on hand 24-7, he'll take care of most of the villagers' food supplies. So that's why I recommend you get a composter for this. It really doesn't matter. Just place it wherever and easily after we place it. There we go. Already got one farming villager. And again, you can also trade some stuff with him. What I like to do is to make a really big farm in my villager breeders and simply harvest the crops myself and then just trade them with a farming villager. But here, I don't have a ton of seeds, so let's just get ooh, a little bit of red dye. Let's just start placing some random stuff. I have some beetroot seeds, some normal seeds, and then I should have some carrots in here. There we go. So again, I don't have a lot, but you don't even have to totally fill up the farm to start. The great thing about this is since you have a farming villager, what's going to happen is even if your farm isn't filled up with seeds all the way, the farming villager will start handling this. And after at least one crop has grown to full maturity, what will happen is the farming villager will harvest the crop and then start replanting them. So eventually your farm will be full. And also what I've found is, for example, say you plant your farm out of entirely wheat. Sometimes your uh, farmer will harvest the wheat and place a carrot or beetroot or potatoes. So if you need any of those extra plants, you know, that's a really good thing. I also went around the village and gathered a few more beds just so we can get some more villagers. So how many beds do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now that I have seven beds, um, I can spawn up to seven villagers just in this little tiny thing. So this is pretty much my villager breeder, but I'm gonna really quickly put some glass over the top and also decorate it just so it looks a little bit nicer. All right, so there we go. Our villager breeder is totally complete. Now again, make sure if you build this above ground that you do put some sort of roof or you make really big walls on the side just so no uh, mobs can get in. Looks like this uh, siren golem's checking out them. But I just, I made a, one more bed. I made a full row of beds. So now we have a decent amount. They should start breeding pretty soon. Now that some of the crops are full maturity, the farming villager will start getting some food. He'll start using the composter. And once he gets a little bit more food, what will happen is he'll go up to these guys, start trading with them, and then eventually you'll see some hearts happening and they will make babies. So it usually takes a few minutes to set into action after the crops are fully grown but yeah i think this is pretty nice it's, it's a pretty small one it's definitely a pretty small villager breeder um i just plopped some flowers around so it could look a little bit prettier if you also want to increase production of your villager breeder make it faster simply make the farm larger and also maybe add another composter or two for some more farming villagers and what's nice is you can always make this to whatever size you want you can you know i can either just dig out this row and add an extra row i can keep adding like i could keep going forever um or if i'm building this above ground i could build little corridors to little places you could make an entire underground village but again this mechanic of breeding villagers is so simple you literally just need a farm and beds which is why sometimes if you already have a pretty large village and you simply make a big farm in the middle such as i have um lots of villagers will start breeding now a quick thing you can do if you want to make this um farm even better and i did this with the villager breeder that i streamed on twitch if you guys want to check that out on the blockworth smp just add a few trap doors add a few more composters or add a few doors you could even add bedrooms if you want like for example i could just uh go to one of the corners you know make a door make a little bedroom put the beds in there but the doors and trap doors, once you have that, that'll actually turn this into an iron golem spawner as well as a villager breeder. Now, it won't start spawning tons of iron golems. It'll depend on the size of this, and it'll depend on what you do with your iron golems. But something this size will probably spawn one or two iron golems. They'll most likely spawn underground. So if you just want that, that's nice to have. Um, but considering I already have tons of beds, and this village already has tons of farms and tons of doors, we should start seeing some iron golems spawn. Obviously, we already have that one iron golem but there is a potential that we could get more so again this is a really simple mechanic and hopefully you guys found it helpful all right so now that we have our villager breeder up and running i'm going to show you guys how to get the best villager super super easily and all we're going to need for that is a lectern it's just a bookshelf and a few slabs now a lectern is useful because it makes librarians and librarians are the villagers that give of course mending books which are what everyone wants it's such a good uh, item to have and also 
the second best villager, in my opinion, is a villager that trades paper for emeralds. Simply because paper is so easy to get, you can just make an automatic sugarcane farm, get tons of paper, and then trade it for emeralds. Now, if you're lucky enough, you'll get two in one. You'll get a villager that trades paper for emeralds, as well as trades mending. But all you really need to do, this is a very simple thing, just simply make sure you get in a little closed off space, place your lectern down, wait for one of the villagers to take the job, and let's see. Well, we didn't get mending right off the bat, but all you need to do is keep breaking the lectern, wait for the villager to lose his job, which sometimes is instant, sometimes it takes a few seconds, but then after it loses its job, place the lectern again, and then just eventually keep checking the trades to see what you get. Now, if the villager is like mine and isn't losing the job, you might just have to wait a little bit, or you might have to close the villager off in its own little private section. So I'm just gonna do this for a few minutes and tell you guys when I get mending. Alright, so I decided to just lock a villager in the house to shuffle through trades, but I didn't get mending yet, but this is what I'm talking about. You definitely want a villager that trades paper for emeralds because it is such a good trade. So I recommend getting two lecterns for two librarians, but I'm still going to shuffle through trades here and see if I can potentially get a better one. See, like this, once you lock it in a little area like this, it should get rid of its job pretty quickly after you break the lectern. And then you just need to keep placing it and just keep doing this until you get mending. I've done this and sometimes I literally get it on the first try sometimes it takes me five minutes sometimes it takes me 10 minutes the most it's ever taken me is it took me about 15 or 20 minutes one time just to get one mending book but it's definitely worth it because once you get it once it's such an overpowered uh you know enchantment it's so nice to have because it makes it so your tools and armor can potentially last forever so i would definitely keep doing this until you get a mending trade Alright, I finally got mending. This one actually it took me a while. I think I got um, pretty much every other enchant before I got mending, but we finally have it. I left. I also checked on my villager breeder. We're making good progress, but there we go. We got the best villager, one that gives mending for relatively cheap and also paper for emeralds. So now the next step is either creating a super massive uh, sugarcane farm just around a pond or an ocean. Um, or your other option is obviously just to make an AFK automatic sugarcane farm, which I'll probably do one soon. I only have a few pieces of sugarcane over here, but I've gotten enough that I have made a few books, obviously, for the bookshelf and stuff. But there we go. We got the villager. I'm just going to leave him in that house for a while, but it's really as simple as that. It's really easy to get the best villager in game, and then from that... Just trade a bunch of paper, get a bunch of emeralds, and you're set. In no time, you'll have mending on all your armor, all your weapons, and you'll be all set. But let's check really fast. Let's check how the villager breeder's doing. I don't know if we have any new villa- Oh, we have one up here. Okay. <laughs> he wants to party. I wonder if maybe I should- I have more glass in my chest at home. I wonder if I could, uh, could get him down there. Let me see if I can get him on, like, a one block- by itself and I can just break it and let him fall underneath because I want if I can get him in there that should increase the productivity of them and uh, I can maybe get more villagers so we can see them we can see let me see if I can uh do I have a boat still no but I can make one here let's do that I'll break I'll just break a few blocks of glass and we can hopefully uh get the villager in there maybe we can even get the iron golem <laughs> let's see oh god no I don't even know if he'll fit oh god he's he doesn't even fit okay well, here, let's get the villager in there really fast, and then we can help get the iron golem out. I think the iron golem just wanted to have fun with his villagers. I feel kind of bad. It's okay, it's okay. Here, let's just, uh... Oh! Okay. He doesn't fit. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. We got him now. I'm sorry. You're down here, though. But, yeah, pretty soon, the, this... He's, he's slow today, but, yeah... He should start harvesting these now that most of these are fully grown. He should start planting more, giving food to the villagers, and eventually they will start to breed. So it's as simple as that. But anyways, guys, that's all for this episode. This actually ended up being a little bit of a smaller episode. I think I was in such a rush to finish everything because I thought it would take a while. Um, that it would be long, but turns out it was pretty short. But anyways, we have some actual really nice, cool build projects coming up soon. So let me know if you guys are hyped for that. But thank you so much for the support on the series. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe everything like that let's shoot for like three likes or something like that uh but yeah this is jay wisp and i will see you all in the next one